Welcome back to another video. I hope all is okay. We are joined with Mr. AJ Morris. Uh, we're gonna run through this year's prep like we did similar in, in 2019. We've got a, a good little uh, memory. We look back before we actually uh, did this and we looked at where we were back in 2019 to where we are now and we think, fucking hell. Pause, um, let's put some of that footage in if we can, guys. Prep is underway now. We're gonna start today. Today's the day. What's the day, 9th, 20th? 20th of January, so looking forward to it. <laughs> Yeah, that's put, gold dust. Put some of that footage in. We both look terrible. Um, but it just goes to show how much you can improve over the past couple of years and that. Anyway, off topic. So wanted to run through with AJ, kind of like talking to a coach perspective and, and talk about what our, our plans are for this year and, and what my intentions are and what we're trying to do differently to last year. Because obviously we learned a lot and I've spoken about a hundred times before about prep should have been, you know, it's things that we did well, we was great, you know, inside out peeled. But there was also things that we could have definitely done and I could have definitely done better. Um, and I just want to run, by, run that by you and let people know exactly what the plan is and what we're trying to do this year. So of course, I'll leave it with you, mate. Explain. Tell All them. right. So first and foremost, appreciate you having me on the channel, mate. It's been a, been a while. So I think we should start first of all with the off season side of things. So long off season, long off season as a byproduct of that, we're going to have a lot of new muscle on the Georgie boy. With that being said, that, that means that we need to make one of our priorities this prep to hold on to as much of that new muscle tissue as we possibly can. With that being the goal, we've used the previous timeline that we had for the last prep, realized that we were ready a little early. The old two lean comments, we were uh, haunted by some of those. And to be fair, in, in that moment, that that state in which George was in, at, at, you know, four, five, six weeks out, if that had been his second prep or his third prep, his fourth prep, you know, and he'd learned lessons in, in regards to how to manage that, that place and how to basically bring that shape to the stage, but with a rested physique, you know, with low fatigue, pulling back on the cardio, pulling back on the steps. We probably would have been able to salvage that a little bit better than, than, than we did, but end up being with that prep that George was, you know, in some of his best looks a little earlier than we would have liked. And, and as a result, didn't maybe show his true potential on stage. So we want to make sure that that is, that is the focus this year, holding onto the new muscle and, and bring his best stage package. We also have a, a long-term vision of, of getting to the British finals. Have a long-term vision of placing very highly at the British finals. So with that kind of model, we're more so 30 so weeks out, 29, 30 weeks out than 21. Um, with that being the thing, we want to be at the qualifiers in, in great condition. We want to do, of course, extremely well at the qualifiers. But as I said, said to George at the start of this prep, qualifier is qualifier. You know, no one really cares or remembers who wins qualifiers, but people really do remember who wins British titles. That's the kind of, I guess, the approach that we're having is making sure that we're in, in great shape for the, for the qualifier. We learn some lessons. We don't try to get ahead of the game too often with regards to fat loss. We run a curve that allows for as much performance to be held in the gym. I think I've learned a lot myself since you last prepped in terms of prepping myself, obviously in 2020, 2021, prepping a lot of clients to the stage over the last couple of years too. So I think my processes have improved in terms of when we can change some exercises for George to hold on to some more muscle, when we can manage volume to hold on to some more muscle, when we can implement some more food to hold on to some more muscle. Uh, so I think George's not only going to experience the, the, the muscle that he had from the, the off season, but also more muscle retention than last time. And as a result, we built this timeline where, you know, we, we, we start we start a little bit uh, with a little bit less total time for the first show than we did the last time. And I know George was initially a little bit skeptical about that, a little bit like, oh, have I got enough time? Am I gonna be, am I gonna be lean on time? Um, and he will, yeah. he will deliver, you know, we will deliver and regardless of what that timeline looks like, if we have to push at points and the food has to get low for us to get to where we need to be on the right schedule, we'll, you know, he'll do it. Yeah. Because uh, I have, and this is why I've set probably some of the, one of the shortest time scales out of any of my current clients with George is because I know him so well. I know when the pedal can be pushed down, the pedal will be pushed down. Of and you know, utmost, utmost trust in George to be able to, to get the job done. Yeah, that's kind of our, our, our approach on things. Um, things that we definitely learned last time is that, you know, when George is there, when George is ready, when George goes through peak weeks, it needs to be a case of really applying the foot off the gas pedal approach that didn't get applied so well last time. And that even, we've been talking about it more often, 
uh, recently it even revolves around you know the workload that George has you know obviously with the YouTube channel the podcast the clients the business growth that he's had over the last couple of years has been tremendous this year is going to be more of the same you can expect this channel to grow substantially uh, but with that it's like okay how can we use George's success to buy back time so where can he make his day more efficient? How can he have time to still flick into athlete mode and be an athlete when he needs to be an athlete? How can he still get enough sleep? You know, these are the things that I think maybe from the outside looking in, people don't understand that coaches should be doing. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't just look at George's data in terms of like, you know, weigh-in and macros. I, if anything, like those are the least important things because I know they're being boxed off. What's important with George is like looking at the greater picture, actually understanding his day a little bit more, understanding what's going on in his personal life a little bit more. And that, over the last two years, I've developed even more of an understanding of. As a coach, I feel like I'm so comfortable and confident knowing George the way that I know him and being able to just be like, right, let's go, let's get this done. But also, okay, George, stop doing this aspect of your day. Calm that down a little bit. Let's get to bed a little bit earlier, for example. And moments of time like that are just e as equally as important as cutting away 25, 30 car because that could allow you to elicit so much more, you know, total potential in terms of fat loss. So yeah, I think yeah, for, for me, definitely. Like even we spoke about this on the podcast last week. It's actually taking a step back and realizing that okay, I can finish my day at half seven. I don't need to be this madman that was like even on, even now before I started prep I was still you know working till nine o'clock at night editing and all this sort of stuff and yep. only as of recently since I started this prep I've decided to take an hour back from that and I'm getting an extra hour of sleep now and, and realizing the importance of that and also like even think about my 2019 prep I didn't even deload once in that in that 40 know, man, weeks crazy. total I didn't have one deload <laughs> you know a lot more relaxed now than what I was previous obviously first time round you're always a little bit nervous you want to make sure you nail it but this time around, I'm, I'm going to be taking those step backward or, or step back more frequent. I'm going to be incorporating the little things like maybe deloads or lesser volume. Like, I, if anything, I was doing more volume towards the end. And yeah, I, know. I know I didn't do like a, uh, a deload for 30 plus weeks. It was fucking ridiculous. So I've definitely learned a lot. And I think after 2019, it made me realize, like, just looking at my stringy physique towards the end, it sort of made me realize, fuck, like, how much you can ruin a physique just by burying yourself and constantly doing more and more and more and i've only just recently started to to appreciate taking a step backwards and actually doing nothing like it's very hard for me to do nothing i'm always on the go doing something walking the dog whatever it might be think about ideas this and that but as of recently i've just gone you know what i'm taking a step backwards from that i'm not going to pursue that because i'm going to put myself first a little bit which is not something that i normally do but i think back in 2019 i just wanted to see where i was at and almost be a number if that makes sense whereas now my mindset is I want to be one of the best this year. I don't want to just be a number. I want yeah. to be the best athlete that stands on stage. I want to present something that is better than 2019. I want to be competing at the top level in, in a lightweight category or, or natural bodybuilding. I feel like, you know, I need to prioritize that a lot more and I have done so far, which has been good. So that's that's the biggest thing that I've learned going into this is I have to prioritize myself a little bit more and be a little bit selfish and say, no, I'm not going to take on people. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And ever since I've been doing that, you know, my sleep's improved. I feel much better for that day. And it's only been like five days on prep, four days on prep so far. So yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, obviously, few, we, we learn as we go, right? You know, there's so many things that you, you mentioned, like you learn from 2019 to now that you're going to we'll incorporate. Year, and, you know, even this year, I'm going to learn more for next time round when, when we prep and stuff like that. So, you know, that's why I've I've stuck. In my off season, I must admit, I've gone and done my own thing here and there. And I've always yeah, ran yeah. by you. Should have been cool. But yeah, we always, we always have, we have the same sort of mindset and opinions anyway on most things but in a, in a prep I feel like for me yes I could probably prep I could really prep myself but I like having someone in my corner that tells me look and we've said I said this to you the other week like in the space of three plus three and a half years we've been working together you've probably given me less than five compliments <laughs> and I absolutely love that like some people hate it some people love the, the coaches to go you look amazing this and that AJ puts me in my place he tells me I look shit if I'm doing this I'm doing this wrong he'll tell me straight away and for me I respond really well to that so I that's one of the reasons I've got AJ in my corner because I know he'll always be very honest with me in that regard. Yeah, moving forward, it's going to be like even I'm four days into it right now, I'm so much more relaxed than what I was before. So much more relaxed and yeah, tell. it's going to be a, a much more enjoyable structured prep. And I know for a while I'm not going to spend the next six months after my prep trying to regain the muscle that I lost. No, that's not no. happening yet. It's going to be a step forward and it's going to be like a, a level up for George next time around. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's going to be exciting. I'm here to, to compete at the highest level this year. I don't care about qualifiers as well. I do want to do well at qualifiers, but you know, when we're thinking about the finals being 30 weeks away, I want to be my absolute best to that. And I know full well, I'm going to you know, be up there and I'm going to be competitive. You know, that's, 
the, the work I put in, the efforts I put in in the last couple of years, the consistency, it's going to reward. I've always said that, and I'm confident in my own abilities to do that as well. I think like just uh, two more little things to mention. One that's very different to last time is the fact that I'm going to have eyes on you in a visual standpoint. Every single week during peak weeks, it'll be every single day I'll be able to see George. You know, whether that's him popping round to mine, whether that's at the gym, it's going to be so easy for that to occur. So, and it, it must be honest, you know, there, there's a limitation with online coaching in the sense that you can't see a body in person at all times but being able to see George on that frequent basis. But also, I get to see this guy's face in the gym on a frequent basis. And I can tell you the face tells me all I need to know, both in terms of how, yeah, I mean, you can tell with my face where I'm at right now. Um, but, you know, both in terms of where he's at, but also in terms of like, you can just see, you know, if you look into someone's eyes when they're prepping, you can see fatigue, you can see uh, emotional stress. You can see it all, especially when you've been there yourself as a coach you know I think that that's a, a very very good quality to have not all coaches have done it and I appreciate some of the best in the world have, have you know never competed or, or at least haven't competed regularly I think it is a quality that's almost uh, you know up there with with some of the, the the most important qualities of a coach is to understand the athlete's psychology at that that point in prep so that's going to be a, a big thing and then you know like you like you said mate you know you're just in a bit different you, you know a much more mature individual you've got a lot more going on but your time management is so much better as well I mean you're surrounded by you know so many great people up here as well like you know Cuba and Meg and Loz and all these people that are just so, so supportive and you've got a great in corner you know supportive corner for yourself this year and which will you know the support aspect of of this I actually remember saying this exact thing on the last video that we did but you know like you guys that are watching this just you know try and support George as much as you can like the comments that he does read is part of his energy and as much as the negative energy I know that you you handle that in a good way you know so like you know if you want to comment something negative you can but um, the positive stuff he really appreciates to so keep it coming because that, that stuff really, really does help. But yeah, I can't, I can't wait. You know, obviously I'm going to be there in person at every single one of George's shows and uh, I'm going to have no voice after it because <laughs> it's going to be an, an emotional, emotional ride. But, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to come out of it with some, some great, great results. I can't wait for it. It's quite interesting when you said about, like, seeing me in the gym because I remember back in my 2019, I had a pool session. It was a barbell row rotation. And I was sitting there and I literally just, there were sessions where I just couldn't get myself up. I was like, yeah, I cannot I'm actually, I can't get myself up and go and do the set. Like when I think back to that, like you can tell whether someone's dragging their ass around in the gym uh, during prep. Don't, that, that's meant to happen, don't get me wrong. But to the point where I was like, I sat down, I was like, I can't fucking get back up now. So yeah, those far. little things, that's why I'm up here as well, you know, just to be around, like, like we said, just the best environment possible for me to be the best version of myself. Um, and it's here and it's uh it's gonna be one hell of a journey anyway i think that's pretty much it we don't need to cover anymore that's it we need to go fucking train that's comment it. below large mug <laughs> large mug or this spider-man bowl <laughs> spider-man bowl I saw that i was like what the fuck's going yeah. on here yeah where the fuck yeah. is this where yeah, Come on, yeah. <laughs> anyway lots of love and we shall see you in the next one Bye. Your boy at all, smash no work, talk about guns, we on that work. Never. And to make shit worse, I got all five, that's rule blood first. He got zoomed and he got burst. Next outcome game, put in the dirt. Dead boy. How the fuck are they king of this shit?